Um, so this week's uh, theme is pilots. And even when I say the word pilot, um, does anyone have a sense of what our what our major conversation topic will be tonight? When you hear about, when you hear, hear the name pilot. Okay, sounds like you guys are a fresh group, un- unbiased. Conflict, yeah. Con- <laughs> Jesus. Conflict between whom? Okay, yep, big things. Uh, conflict between Rome and Israel? I mean, think about this scene. Yeah, the Jews and the Romans. Uh, Jews and Gentiles. Think about the scene. In fact, let's go ahead and pull out the painting. And I realize you're going to have to read it when we do the painting anyway. So we'll do that in a minute. Okay. So everybody got your painting open? Um, so um, so we make some introductory comments about the painting. Are you guys free, Are you guys freezing now? Yeah, I'm going to fix that air conditioner once, once and for all. Yeah. It'll, it'll turn off quickly, Irma. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to talk about the painting, but um, rather than me launching the conversation, let's do it the way we're supposed to, which is look at the painting while Tim reads the passage. And, we'll read the passage. and go ahead and read, go ahead and read the extended passage. All right, so you guys know your job is to look at the painting while you're listening, okay? And um, and so you're envisioning what is uh, being read uh, by Cicero's, um, that's the, op- the uh, author, the painter, his interpretation of these events. And and what we'd like what we would like you to do is to make comments about either the painting or the passage, and that'll launch the discussion um, as as we uh, as we get into that. So. Um, I'm going to pray, and then Tim's going to read. So, Lord, um, as we interpret um, Pilate and the life of Pilate and um, this interaction between um, Pilate and Jesus, between uh, Rome and uh, Israel, Lord, that uh, you would uh, open up our hearts, uh, unfold our hearts, and, uh, Lord, we invite you to speak to our hearts in ways even that we wouldn't expect in Jesus' name. <clears throat> when the Jewish leaders took things to Caiaphas, the palace of Rome, and now it is already known that they were ceremonially unclean, they were not able to eat this until they were thrown into the pit. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What are the charges you are bringing against? If you were not a criminal, therefore, you would not have been given over to me. Now, take it yourselves, for I don't know you. We have no right to execute you. Take your places before I proceed to execute you. Pilate then went back to his fellow Jews. Come and see, he asked. Will you give me your own? Is that your own idea? Jesus is going to 
by this list of Gallic empires of high antiquity, who dwelt in Amphipolis at the time of the Ptolemaic Deluge and so on. They are fugitives. They are stopped here. They can't go out here. Jersey was quite proud. They had to stand down the middle. Anyone that knows them knows that they can. The Carabergus, the Gardens of South America, have some beautiful stone pieces in them. They were a couple of them. Where is it? What did you notice? What did you hear? Really? Being a first. that Jesus uh, in, this, in the account has already been uh, whipped uh, 39 times and has had the crown of thorns beaten into his head. He should be covered with blood and his flesh should be torn to pieces on his back and he should have blood streaming down his face. <laughs> <laughs> Antony Cicery. <laughs> Antonio Cicery. Yeah, I uh, I talked to Antonio on the phone last night, and he said, "Can you please, please um, keep keep that keep that group from slamming my car?" Um, he, he died in like 18, 1897 or something like that. Carolyn. Yeah, uh, I'm not supposed to talk to the dead. Um, yeah, his robe is not purple. Uh, and so let's just talk about, uh, do you think the author was just ignorant? Or did the author do this on purpose? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mel Gibson does a good job uh, in Passion of the Christ, uh, make an indelible image uh, 
And I couldn't watch that movie more than once because I, I don't want I don't want to see it. Anymore. Then would you like to uh, pray a prayer to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Um, okay, so Jolie, maybe just because he's thinking it's too gruesome. Uh, and, and may, okay, like maybe it'll detract from other things he's trying to do. Okay. Wait, are, are you saying they didn't think it was the same guy that came in on the triumphal entry a week before? Or, or, or no, no, I'm just wondering, or, or are you saying they didn't understand who Jesus actually was? Yeah, they didn't okay. exactly. Like right. Someone raised and sent him back. Yeah. Clearly not. Well, it's interesting that they say that because they're trying to get Jesus to show loyalty to Caesar with the coin, the tax question. And they hate, they hate the Romans. They really hate the Romans. So that shows how desperate they are to get something done, that they're willing to say the thing that is the most opposite. Like, do they even have any convictions? Yeah, look at her left hand, um, like, and, and, and her servant girl or whoever that is, is kind of gri- gripping her elbow. Well, that's a, that's a question. Lois is asking, is this the moment of choice? Um, the fact that he's wearing the, the, the crown and the robe shows that it's, gone, it's to the point to where they're freaking out, yelling, crucify him. And look at the faces. Can you see the faces of the crowd between the railings there? Take a look at that. Um, they're fairly rabid at that point. But I'm, I'm assuming. The, yeah. Here's a man raised. 
Yeah, so he's brought him out. Um, okay, why did Pilate dress Jesus? Why did, well, first of all, did, it says that the soldiers dressed him up. And was that Pilate's idea or, or theirs? And why do you say that, Zoe? Yeah. So you don't think Pilate was thinking, I'm going to have some fun and make and, 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 and fl- inflame the Jews by dressing them like a king? Okay. I'm trying to get away out. Okay. Lois, you were going to say something and I cut you off. Okay. Yeah. Can, can you talk about the Matthew 27 passage? I would love to. This, is, this, this flipped me out when uh, Tim brought this up the other day. Yeah, so you're jumping out of your own notes, right? Um, but I just think, so this struck me as one of those Sabbath passages that are really custom, I'll go with that one. Now, it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner to close the Sabbath day. At that time, we had a well-known prisoner whose name was Anton Pilate. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want to release to us? Do you want Barabbas or do you want the Christ? And then there's that second question. And I think so many people say to us, understates it. Matthew blows it up a little bit more, right? And he's taking a look and he says, I desire to take off Barabbas' yard. Then he says, I disappear. But don't you get that I believe that there's more than one way to this story. Yeah, the rulers want Jesus put in jail. But the people, because of their longing for Barabbas, and I went and saw the obituary of Jesus, for good reason. Podcast always brought up, you know, just we talked about just the reality of what it would have been to live in that era. Horrible, right? They were very wicked. And yet, can I amplify that point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So um, we talked about how a lot of Messiah figures cropped up uh, between zero and and actually continuing. There was another major one in one thirty five named Bar Kokhba, which is when um, the Jews were permanently expelled from their land. Uh, the temple got destroyed at 70. This is taking place around 33 or whatever. Um, so, um, but for decades leading up to this moment, um, parents would take their kids into Jerusalem for Passover or whatever. And on the outside of town when they went in, they would have to see um, people like Barabbas hanging on crosses, gasping for air, um, completely naked. And this is what I mean, imagine going to worship and you got to walk through uh, several that week's set of people who they're who they've nailed the crosses, and um, and what do you do with your kids? Do you cover their eyes, or do you say, um, kids, um, we're, we're by the grace of God, we're we're going to get these sons of bitches out of here. God's going to come and, and and give these people their due. I mean, what do they do? But um, they want. So you know what they want. I mean, think of think of the worst political situation, and uh, and freedom fighters. Are they the heroes or the villains? I mean, we think of Barabbas as some violent criminal. He's a freedom he's a freedom fighter, you know, and he's what they want. And and it's just I thought it was so interesting that they both have they both are Yeshua, uh, 
Bar Abbas, I think that's son of the father, Bar Abba, and then Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, and um, yeah, and, and, and this is, you know, several days removed from the time of Bar Abba. And now he is not here. And then he's arrested. And now he's in prison cell. And then so they're just going, we, we just want to not, like, it's obviously that So what's with Jesus the Messiah uh, being such a wimpy loser king? And I'm, that might sound offensive, but this is what they see. What's with that? As like in the picture here. You'd have done what? I would have handed them over. I don't know these events in my human terms. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know who Jesus is, but I knew him. And he knew that the chief priests were doing this in their own benefit. That's what Matthew 20 says when yeah. they send him out. And that doesn't have much of a good reason in my mind, you see, until they said, we're going to take yeah, you're, you're no friend of Caesar if you yeah, let this guy leave. Yeah, until they said that, he, he was all for it even though because he knew the chief priest had a son. He's trying to decide between his wife, who's adamant, and that crowd who's saying, you know. Yeah, but he knows it's not right. Like Matthew 20, 20, he said they weep for themselves. They know yeah. that he's the governor. They go to the council of elders, the people, the crowd. They go to the crowd. The crowd, they said they came to talk to say, Nobody wanted to build up that synagogue. That was their whole life going to the synagogue and just not letting it be cast. Yeah. They knew it'd be cast out. They said, like, you did not come from here. But that's not going to cast their whole family out. That's not going to give us a whole bad reputation. People are not going to stop serving you because you stopped going to Green Mountain. Right. But if you were cast out of the synagogue, you were an outcast in the city. And so when they were up there, say, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Because the Hebrew states are all over the world. This is Passover. And they say, crucify him. So that's why they did it, because they still wanted to be a part of that Green Mountain gang. No. Yeah. You probably ha- would have a hard time maintaining your bu- your employment, your business, yeah, if you were you if you were out of the synagogue, the in your lo- local village. Yeah. The garden of the that's right. He said, they said, oh, he knows enough to answer for this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Jeff, did you have something? Let's talk about the apostles or the or the, the disciples, the twelve. Now, in this scene, where are the twelve right now? Well, he hasn't been killed yet. But yeah, but they did run. They 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 did get scattered. Um, okay, now where are they with on the subject of uh, strong leader uh, versus uh, whatever? They don't know what Jesus is yet. They don't know he's going to rise. I mean, he told them. They don't. I don't think they get it. And um, and and um, Peter was. I mean, what did Peter do? He pulls out his sword. Peter's acting like Barabbas is his is his Messiah. And Jesus is like, put it away. And 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 within a few hours, he's he's denying any affiliation with him. Um, and so it's not like the twelve are are saying, uh, 
he's our guy. I mean, I, I wonder if the 12 are like, we're not sure he's our guy either. Yeah, a little later on after the story. A conversation between, yeah. 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 Amen. Carolyn, were you going to say something? Okay. Well, it's interesting how John does that because um, you've got Rome in the foreground. You've got Israel in the background, right? What do you think that building is back there? I think it's a temple. At least it looks a lot like I've seen uh, photo reproductions of Herod's temple. I, and it sure looks a lot like this. And so you've got Rome, the might of Rome. See the little eagle uh, insignia? on the corner there. You've got the might of Israel. Can we say that? In, in that temple. And can I mm-hmm. go back to one of the other questions? We, we actually have not just the might of Israel, but there's, we have the might of Israel's rights. That, that's, 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 really, that's really where the might is held in this book. It's not, you know, it's not a king. It's not, Herod's not in this story. It's, All right, so let's say that this depicts the battle between church and state. Let's just play with that for a minute. Okay? All right. They're, they're still in Jerusalem. Was pretty sure what he was going to say. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a, a scripture, a prophecy. Is, is it in Zechariah, uh, Serena, about the shepherd being struck and the sheep scattering? Yeah, and um, so there's, and then, and yet, right before that, uh, a few hours, like the night before, Jesus is saying, "I've lost none of these. You know, I've they, I've done my job. I've I haven't lost any of them except for the one appointed to destruction." Yeah. And I'm just wondering. I, I tend to think that the twelve uh, and Judas is still alive, so they are somewhere in the city when this is happening. <coughs> Okay. So they're, maybe they're in the upper room. I don't know if it's the same upper room as the, where they had the uh, the Passover meal. Okay. Or maybe they're not there because that's someone might know that that's where they were earlier, and that we just know they're hiding somewhere. And um, are, at, the, at this time, are they trying to figure out if they picked the wrong horse? It's like Fran said, they don't know that it's Jesus. And of course they don't. We do. We, we know what side. Yeah, instead he just got killed. Instead he just got killed. And, um, all right. Exactly. And, 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 
in this in in this particular moment, it looks like he's going to let himself be killed. He's going to let himself be arrested. If you were if you were the disciple and you've been on this other thing, he tried to start the revolution. Jesus said, "Do not kill the Lord of the Universe." It's like you're still doing that stuff, Jesus. Uh, when you know, and even John, even John the Baptist, John's in prison saying, "Are you actually the one?" Because we're waiting for the overthrow, and then his response is Isaiah 61 or some version of that. You know, just tell him that the, the lame are being. You know, it's just like I'm sure John is just like, "Come on, man." Yeah, and he had to say, "I am not." One thing I love about John is Jesus says, "I am" like 11 times, and. Uh, and John the Baptist, are you the Messiah? I am not. <laughs> Same language, add another word. Uh, the night before, uh, Peter's warming himself with the fire, and the servant girl says, aren't you one of them? And he also says, I am not. And so there's this weird counter-proclamation going on. Let me get back to church and state. But let's just assume for the sake of argument that the, uh, the, that's the temple behind them, and that represents a religious institution. That's the church, right? And then in the foreground is the state, uh, the Roman state, which has no interest in... They, they put up with the church in order to keep the, the crowds from rebelling. We'll let you have your temple. You don't even have to uh, worship Caesar. Just say a prayer for him on behalf of your God. Um, but if this is... I think Cicero is... And, and honest, honestly, I think John is depicting... Because we've got the two... We've got the religious power structure and we got the worldwide... Uh, political power structure in the same room, and right here they're in the same scene, and um, and so which side of these two elements is Jesus on? Is he for the church? Is he for the religious institution, or is he for the Roman government? Did you say all of them? Can you explain that? Okay. Yeah. But which institution is he back in? Yeah, can we differentiate between the individual, the popular constitution, and the institution? Which one, you guys? Now, isn't Jesus always for the church? Or is it different now? The church is different, the church is different than the temple because, because we're into Christianity now. It's like the Jewish church. <laughs> Keep in mind that in, in uh, he's fighting both systems. Yeah, and can I, can I, can I, can I sorry. Can I ask a follow-up question: What system is killing? You you said systems plural, so you already spoiled. Yes. <laughs> Well, it's a it's a continuous issue throughout the history of civilization, the battle between church and state. And uh, when I studied, um, I, I was a history major, and of course, it's called Christendom, uh, the church versus the state, and it's always one getting the upper hand over the other. And honestly, when I when I read about that, I just I picture this scene here that that uh, you know, which which side are you rooting rooting for? And and I just still see Jesus saying, uh, none of it. Yeah. Of the devil. Yeah, and, and, and did Jesus spend more time uh, criticizing Rome or more more time criticizing the religious system at that time? Yeah, he, he barely talked about Rome. He, he really barely, uh, to everyone's dismay, it's like, come on, we know what your job is, and when do we get to that part? You know? Yeah. That was a pro Caesar statement. That was a weirdly pro Caesar statement, but it, it threw him, you know. Mm -hmm. Pay your taxes. Um, you got something? Oh, I just, you know, like the word communism. 
conflict about being an ally. And I think that, that obviously conflict is present. But the word that comes to my mind is what you're talking about is energy. Yes. Yeah. Two energy that we have. It's a, a rare moment when they're in agreement. Yeah. Yeah, like someone mentioned earlier, the Jewish people are actually saying, see, we have no king but Caesar. And, and that's a ridiculously colluding. And that, and that gets him to capitulate to where they can, they can kill the guy. Um, this, uh, uh, it's interesting how important the temple was to the, the life of the, uh, of the ancient Jews. And uh, the temple was where God resided. Um, and, um, you know, Jesus, in the, uh, the other three Gospels, he cleanses the temple this week. In John's Gospel, he does it at the very beginning. So Jesus makes a prophetic statement against the temple. And, of course, he says crazy things like, tear this thing down, you know, build it, I'll rebuild it in three days. And, and you don't, and that's, that was a big thing that, it's like, well, we just need to kill him because he's, he's dissing the nation. You know, he's dis, dissing God's institution. And I find it funny that there's a bunch of guys on the top of the temple. Like, like I don't. I don't envision people standing on the temple like it's some kind of balcony, you know, <laughs> like it's too holy for that. But um, uh, if that's the temple, uh, how, how many years does this building have left before it's gone forever? Yeah, a little less than 40. And uh, uh, anybody read Josephus, a uh, Jewish historian? And he talks about, he goes into graphic detail about the sacking of Jerusalem and uh, in and Jesus said, leave town when they encircle the town. And, uh, and the people, uh, the pro-institution, religious institution, the church people, um, are like, the temple is safe because God lives there. It's God's place. And so they, I mean, Rome has, has breached the walls, and there the zealots, the soldiers are gathered around the temple. It's their last stand. Josephus gets in the vivid description. And they're getting killed right outside of the temple. So the last group of them, they go into the temple. They're not supposed to go in. They, they go into the front room, which is, they're not technically supposed to do that. But they know that's the only place of safety. And the Romans go into the, the front room of the temple, and they butcher them all. They butcher. I mean, the, the blood is spilled in the front room. And then they go, and then they, they, go, and tear the whole thing. they go into the Holy of Holies. The Rome, and they're like, there's nothing here. And, and, and this thing is torn down, um, and, and they say the reason that they tore it down brick by brick is because, you know, it was, it, it was laden with gold on the inside, and, and the gold was between, uh, after the fire, after, after they burned it, the gold melted into the seams within the rocks, and to get to the gold, they had to take every stone, every stone off, until it was completely laid waste, and they scraped every bit of gold off of that. And um, talk about... Uh, I mean, these guys had a generation to sort through their uh, their lame Messiah, and we don't know the story of, of Barabbas' the rest of his life. And if was he was he one of the guys? Was he an old man now fighting in front of that temple, uh, cheering the young guys on? But um, I just love Jesus because, and I think uh, I think non-religious people have often often loved Jesus. Because he is not for the religious institution. He is not for the political institution. He has a third option. And the church is the third option. And the problem is, is the church, which actually just means gathering, the church is not a building, and we've made it a building. Church has become a, uh, a, a noun, uh, and, and, and we've made the church uh, another version of this white thing in the background about to get torn down. Yeah, the church is us. That's why we can meet in a lame little building and still completely be the church. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but don't blow by what Alex just said to me of much of the included in the lame church. I don't remember what I said. Is what began as a movement within this house went off in the wrong direction. Of the church. Yeah, with, with, I mean, we all know it. The church, the church always tends toward institutionalization, right? And then you have renewal, or we have re renewal movements like the Vineyard. They say we're not, we're not. I mean, it's funny because you know the Vineyard uh, refuses to call itself a denomination because that's an institution, you know, and uh, as if you know 
becoming a denomination suddenly turns you into this white building back here, right? Yeah, home churches are an answer to we are not the institution, we are the people, you know. And then sometimes uh, the home church model becomes very institutional, like, you know. <laughs> And, uh, the, and, and and meanwhile, we're bad-mouthing all the other people that aren't, you know. And Jesus is like, you know, may they be one that the world may know. And, and we're, we're all pointing fingers at each other that you're the institution. No, you are. And we're the new, we're the wineskin. You know, we're, we're the new wine. You're the wineskin. You know, and, and it's just all, it's, yeah, new world. Yeah, like, which is what John is all about, new and old. But, um, go ahead. Classic um, bad bad religion. Yeah. Yeah, I think Lazarus was definitely laying low. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to. Um, all right, so you know we have a few minutes left before we do the groups. Um, I did want to talk about the theme uh, this week, which is um, uh, witness and testimony. Um, it's one of, you know, we've been saying that um, John lays out the, the 11 primary themes in the first chapter of his gospel, and then he unfolds those themes continuously throughout um, the, uh, if you want to turn to page 20 or just listen to me, verse 6, there was a man sent from God, his name was John, he came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that all through him, uh, through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he was a witness to the light. So the words like witness, testify, testimony uh, are all over this book. Um, Jesus says, you know, I am such and so. And they're like, you, you can't, you need someone else to testify for you. You can't just claim stuff and be taken seriously. And then Jesus is like, that's okay, my, my father is my guarantee guarantor, you know, like, well, where's your father? You know, if, if you, uh, if you believe the truth, you would know my father. What are you talking about? And then, um, uh, and, and, he, and it comes up continuously, uh, you know, words, uh, testimony, witness, um, anti-witness, and, um, and it's a big deal. In, in John 15, um, Jesus has been talking a lot about how the father testifies to him and how his works testify to uh, the Father, and then he throws this other thing, says, the Advocate's coming, the Holy Spirit, and he testifies to me, and so now we have the third person of the Trinity introduced as also testifying, he's that second party testifying, and then Jesus says, and also you guys are going to testify for me. Like, so this big, it's a huge question, who is going to speak for Jesus? And and uh, and just before he dies, he got, he says, it, "It's been the Father, it's been me, and now it's it's going to be you guys." The weird thing is, is uh, uh, Pilate seems to have this weird, almost like a tick or a um, speech impediment. Uh, for some reason, he keeps referring to Jesus as the King. And um, yeah, he, he seems to have a Tourette syndrome issue going on. Um, and it's odd. I mean, John does that, and, and Pilate keeps saying, here's your king, you're going to kill your king. And, and why is he doing that? Is he trying to inflame them? He, no, he's trying to he's trying to get out of it. Um, he's inflaming them. You know how many times Pilate uh, re- references Jesus as king? He does it seven times. And, and uh, Jesus references himself as the I am. Uh, connected to a metaphor seven times. He does it all together more than that, 11 times. Uh, and so in a weird, twisted way, you have the enemy, the state, the state testifying. Uh, the question is, who's going to testify for you? And Pilate can't seem to stop doing it. <laughs> you know, here's your king, you know. 
Um, and and yeah, and, he, and that's the seventh time is he he creates a sign in three languages or four I forget saying King of the Jews, and so Pilate, I mean for someone who's supposed to uh, keep keep competitors for Caesar out of play, he sure seems to be, and it's just a weird testimony theme that that the, the person who's killing him can't help but also testify to. Dean. I haven't heard about that. That's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Preserve, preserving the institution. Yeah, I and the Father are one. He glorifies me, I glorify Him, and now He's going to give you His glory, you know, which is, a, which is also a relational thing. I'm going to shine on you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah. I just like it that John likes to do things in sevens. There's seven signs, main signs in in the John. Um, and then later on when he writes the book of Revelation, he just like spazzes out on sevens uh, nonstop. Uh, John loves, loves sevens. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's seven is complete. Um, all right, I think we need to go into our groups, your groups. So um, I think that, you know, we always have a uh, uh, spiritual gift thing. And I'm going to, and I want to turn on the AC, but you guys won't hear each other. Um let me read the group discussion questions. The question Pilate not only asked, but hey, the answer is, what will you do with him? Uh, and uh, one thing we wanted to highlight is that um, uh, we're still looking for a Jesus who will uh, kick butt. And um, we're, we're looking for a Jesus that will do our bidding. Uh, and he often, he still disappoints uh, because he's got a higher plan. And yet, um, he loves to give us what we ask for. It's an interesting um, clash. Um, the the prayer question for tonight, and your leaders will take you through it, is, is how have you been disappointed by, by Jesus' style of leadership in your life 
And what I would hope that you would ask for prayer for is something that you've wanted from Jesus and hasn't happened yet. Um, and then uh, ask it for each other. All right? Yeah. And, yeah, and you have 26 minutes to do that in. And we're turning the lights out at 8 o'clock. So. All right, enjoy your, enjoy your group discussion.